Assalamu alaikum students and welcome back to new video. Today we are going to discuss about what we have learned previously. Let's record before we conclude and uh, before finishing this chapter because uh, in this lecture we are going to finish this chapter. So before finishing it, let's recall what we have learned before. So let's start from the beginning. I am going to discuss about all those topics of this chapter in brief. First of all, I would like to tell you that uh, this chapter is not entirely in our syllabus but partially. That means uh, the first topic of that uh, African case, which is a case study of uh, South Africa, which is not uh, included, that is excluded from the syllabus. So here, this chapter we are going to start from need of constitution. Uh, so we need of constitution as uh, according to textbook, we are not going to take the entire paragraph, but the first paragraph we are going to skip. So like uh, previously we have discussed already in the first video of this chapter, need of constitution. Why do we need constitution? So detailed discussion uh, already done. So basically uh, I can conclude three needs, so three basic needs uh, we can say that why do we need uh, constitution. Answer is, first uh, it, generates, uh, it generates degree of trust and coordination among people that is necessary for the different kind of people living together because uh, in one country we know that different kind of people live together sometimes trust issues uh, sometimes uh, like uh, distrust as well as uh, conflict among different communities so to maintain uh, trust as well as coordination among different groups of people constitution is necessary yeah uh, moral support of people is definitely required but uh, here constitution provides us that legal support that is why constitution is necessary secondly it specifies how government will be constituted and who will have the power to make decision system of government as well as powers of the government that uh, prescribes in the constitution uh, if no then government may rule by its own without limitation of power so that is why here uh, limits of power are also necessary so that uh, guided by the constitution of any respective country next it lays down limit to the powers of government and also specify rights of the citizen first uh, how the government constituted prescribes in the constitution and uh, gives the power means uh, what powers what kind of decision can be taken by the government uh, second here it also puts limit limits on power government cannot enjoy any government cannot enjoy limitless power and less powers absolute powers cannot be enjoyed by the government there are certain limits because ultimately in the democracy government rules for the people so that is why government cannot enjoy absolute power so that is why the uh, constitution uh, provides limits on the power which limits on the power as well as uh, it guides the rights of the citizens uh, being citizens we have certain rights so those rights also legal rights which are prescribed in the constitution and uh, fourth one here, next one, uh, fourth need. It also expresses the aspiration of the people about creating good society. We have ambitions, we have aspirations to make good society. And this uh, way fulfilled by the constitution. So here we can answer, why do we need a constitution? Next, let's talk about making of the Indian constitution. Already we have discussed it was a mammoth task and various challenges before the people to frame the Indian constitution. The greatest challenge we have seen that partition of India. So there were many changes and at the same time uh, as we have discussed before there were some way easy way we had like uh, unlike African constitution which we hadn't discussed in this chapter but for Africa difficult to make constitution because unlike India there was no long freedom movement and the uh, basic values given during the freedom struggle but uh, about India we have discussed in India during the freedom struggle movements towards freedom from the British Empire that many values basic principles given by different leaders so their ideas their philosophies already accepted so on the basis of uh, those principles, those values, 
our constitution makers adopted certain basic principles for our constitution so let's talk about uh, institutional evolution in 1936 uh, 37 elections of provincial legislature and ministries were held over british in india uh, yes uh, in british india elections were held uh, because of people's demand and uh, protest certain elections provisions were given by the british government in india but uh, there were limitations limitations such as they give a right to the british people as well as indian people these indian people those who were rich powerful and educated voting rights only those people had women didn't have rights right so just uh, elections we can say that nominal elections were there so in 1937 nominal election i am using the word according to my view nominal nominal elections were there uh, elections for provincial legislature provinces area regions that uh, subdivision of country or province the indian constitution adopted many institutional details and procedures from colonial laws like government of india act 1935 today like uh, we have system like administrative system of uh, we can say like uh, police department court system administrative system like collector and uh, magistrate and all those systems taken by adopted uh, from the taken by the our constitutional makers from the british government the system actually enacted by british government in india after years thinking and decisions our leaders got uh, confident to learn from other countries not limited to india or not limited uh, the systems given by the british uh, government in india but those our constitutional makers our leaders adopted various principles various things various uh, provisions from different countries such as uh, from the french revolution from usa from russian revolution right from diff- as well as from britain to so from different countries good things adopted good principles adopted good provisions adopted for the constitution of india the constituent assembly now let's uh, discuss uh, that how the constituent assembly was formed elections of the constituent assembly were held in july 1946 earlier we have discussed as well as in the last video i have discussed to that this constitution made by elected members of the constitution assembly constituent assembly those members were elected by the people but uh, as that time universal adult franchise that means uh, all the citizens above 18 years have right to cast vote so that universal adult franchise was not adopted that time Uh, yes, uh, since beginning in our constitution, universal adult franchise adopted. So that time, elections were held, but uh, according to the British system, so limited numbers of people had uh, rights to cast their vote. So that uh, elections were held in 1946. 1946. That means before the independence, before the partition. but uh, soon after means about a uh, year after uh, india divided uh, into two parts uh, tragic uh, decision taken by those leaders is the division partition of india india and pakistan so that constituent assembly also divided into two some members uh, left to pakistan they joined the constituent assembly for the pakistan so remaining members those who were indian members they remained in india and uh, they remained the members of the constituent assembly of india so the indian constituent assembly had 299 members as earlier i said and uh, some key people we have discussed before and uh, before i also suggested to to refer them as a dedicated video Uh, with the heading some important people of uh, constituent assembly already uploaded uh, with their photographs photographs two photographs given one real photograph one sketch which is given in the textbook 
so as well as about their uh, birth place uh, state mention their uh, time birth and death as well as uh, their achievement were they so such information already provided so refer as well as you have to write those information in your notebook okay now next uh, as we discussed before the assembly adopted the constitution on 26th of november again i am reminding you here differences first difference adopted by 26th of november 1949 and came into practice 26th of january 1950 and uh, that is why we celebrate uh, 26th of january as republic day more about uh, constitution that why do we accept uh, this 70 years old constitution so answer is here answers we have discussed already so first uh, this constitution not made by a group of few people or randomly these people were elected members right and they form uh, they frame the constitution second indian constitution uh, has adopted uh, various principles from uh, different countries uh, with the keep in mind that people in the center now we also have seen earlier uh, we also have seen that uh, working of constituent assembly uh, let's uh, revise it means how did they make this uh, make decisions so assembly was dominated by indian national congress yet they given they gave chance to all the people even those tribal people as well as uh, people from different regions people from different political parties people from different groups and uh, those decision uh, taken not only by random ideas came and uh, written and drafted no uh, there were procedure system they followed first uh, basic principles uh, taken then uh, drafting committee uh, draft the constitution draft means like a basic structure and uh, chairperson of uh, drafting committee was uh, baba saheb ambedkar we call him the father of the indian constitution and after that uh, those various provisions various principles discussed in, in the meetings and uh, systematic meeting and everything uh, discussed and debated in the meeting recorded uh, for the future need so if any dispute uh, if uh, today uh, so if uh, unable to understand certain provision certain word or certain uh, sentence of the constitution we can take help of their discussions which are recorded and uh, preserved more here uh, about the philosophy of the indian constitution uh, as we know that about philosophy we have discussed before that uh, basic philosophy as i earlier told you uh uh, uh mahatma gandhi and dr ambedkar we have discussed about uh, to them in the brief so about mahatma gandhi what to what his ideas uh, which he published in 1931 a magazine called young india i will uh, publish the idea in the video upcoming video as you uh, not to write but uh, for uh, just for your information as well as uh, dr ambedkar uh, he gave the speech so his idea as a speech will i will uh, publish in the next coming videos as well as uh, jawaharlal nehru uh, as uh, his speech to uh, he delivered a speech uh, on the independence day uh, independence day 15th of august 1949 uh, what he uh, aspected uh, from the independence independent india Uh, now let's talk about uh, guiding values uh, which are prescribed in the preamble uh, we have seen the preamble is like uh, the first page uh, of the constitution uh, actually uh, it's like introduction to the constitution that is called preamble to the constitution and uh, preamble is like the uh, heart of the constitution Uh, it gives uh, basic information about the constitution uh, it says what is this constitution all about so in the last video we have discussed uh, values which are uh, given in the preamble uh, so let's uh, discuss about those uh, few keywords few means uh, important keywords which are uh, already given in the preamble i will uh, try to upload uh, preamble as well uh, as well as you have to note down in your notebook primer right 
and those keywords also you have to note down along with the preamble, uh, which I deliver, uh, which I publish soon in the notes, means uh, next video, one of the coming videos. So here we have seen meet the people of India in this uh, constitution that uh, has been drawn up and uh, elected by those uh, elected representative. That is why they mention here meet the people of India is all this thing on the on the behalf of the people of India. Uh, sovereign means that uh, country is free and government is free to take decision. Uh, no inner or outer power can influence on the government's make, uh, process of process of decision making. Uh, socialist uh, wealth is divided uh, equally. That is why socialist. The, uh, in detail already I have discussed, but uh, coexistence of private and public sector. And secular means there is no official religion, and uh, people can follow any religion of their choice. And suppose uh, a person doesn't want to follow any religion, so that person is called an atheist, and that is officially a law. And uh, no one can discriminate it against uh, on the basis of religion. Uh, democratic country, India is a democratic country where uh, people elect their representative, as well as a republic country where head of the nation, the president is an elected person. Justice, uh, social, politic, uh, as well as economical. Liberty of citizen means we can express our thoughts, that uh, we are free to think, uh, we can criticize, we have right to express our thoughts. Equality among uh, citizens, uh, no matter which caste, which community, so that uh, what we call equality before the law, so we are legally equal here. A fraternity here, brotherhood, is also one of the basic principles. So nowadays, uh, people are fighting, creating violence, conflicts among community. So those people who think like that, they are actually against the constitution. That's clear, right? Because fraternity, brotherhood uh, is one of the basic things in our constitution, which is clearly prescribed in the preamble. So that is our duty. Actually, it's our duty to uh, maintain uh, brotherhood in our country. And uh, those who are uh, going against it, uh, they are against the constitution, and uh, that's set. Uh, so now let's uh, discuss uh, last uh, topic: institutional design. Listen it carefully. Here, uh, constitution is not only about the uh, basic principles, because principles are there already. Uh, but uh, here is a, it is important that how to bring all those things into the practice. How to bring those uh, systems into the uh, country, right? So this uh, systematic arrangement is called institutional arrangement or institutional design, so, which is also prescribed in our constitution. That is mandatory because without it, uh, that uh, constitution is merely a document, nothing more than it. But here, important about the uh, institutional design. So, constitutional embodies the values and philosophy in institutional arrangement. Most of the Indian constitution detail this arrangement. So, our constitution is a long document about uh, 342 pages, and uh, most of the details are given about this all constitutional, uh, so, uh, sorry, institutional arrangements. But the constitutional the constitution describes the institutional arrangements in legal language. No, legal language means uh, there is uh, no different language like English, Gujarati. Legal language means uh, actually it is in uh, mean English version. And uh, legal language means words they use, those are legal words, not common words. Uh, right. So if we try to read this uh, constitution for the very first time, it is difficult for us to understand. So we can take uh, help uh, reference as well, understanding. The makers of the constitution made provisions for making amendments. One more thing, earlier we have discussed that uh, it is difficult and it is difficult to accept that uh, 70 year old constitution and so on. So for this reason, our constitution, constitution makers, they have made provisions of amendment. Amendments means changes. Uh, due to time, due to different situation, uh, our constitution can be 
amend can be changed. Some constitution can't be changed. Basic principles can't change. But uh, yes, some of the provisions can be changed. Uh, if we want to change in the institutional design, can. Uh, not easy task. Uh, it's a huge uh, task uh, because they have to take uh, permission, uh, sanctioned by the uh, Rajya Sabha as well as Lok Sabha. So it's a difficult task. It's not an easy task. But yes, still can. Difficult task for the safeguard means the government cannot make changes according to its wish. But yes, if required, uh, if uh, all the representatives agree upon, in that case they can make amendments. So that is actually a good thing for us. Right? So in its working, there are three major aspects. It lays down procedures for choosing person to govern the country. So in our constitution, uh, in detail it uh, prescribes uh, about the election. So in uh, this uh, basic uh, things, those basic aspects we will learn in upcoming chapters. Yeah, uh, it's very difficult to learn in detail, but yes, uh, we can get the basic ideas about these things. So for elections, uh, we call it democratic country, but uh, how to conduct election, uh, how to make elections fair. So all these things that uh, described in our constitution already, uh, we call it the election system. So we will discuss election system in the next chapter as well as it defines who will have how much power to take decisions. Powers given to the government, a limitation of power, distribution of power among executive, legislature and judiciary. And the third, it puts limit what the governments can do by providing some rights to the citizen that cannot be violated, that we call them fundamental rights. So, uh, of course, about the constitution, it's very difficult to understand. Uh, means, not difficult, but uh, all the things difficult to understand. So, all the basic things uh, we'll try to understand in the uh, coming chapters. And uh, now, this chapter is officially over here. If you have any doubt, uh, any query, you can uh, send your query or doubt, uh, your question on the helpline number. And uh, in upcoming videos, I will provide you notes. So you have to note down notes, notes uh, along with uh, NCRD solution as well as uh, some uh, important questions uh, we differ or we call them practice questions along with answers. Thank you so much.